Cooking can be an energetic and exciting endeavor. When you imagine a chef whipping up a feast, you might think of flames leaping off a pan or a liquid turning into a cloud of steam as it reduces into a sauce. And I've demonstrated both such things on this channel. But not every recipe requires such intensity. In fact, for some, a gentle touch is critical to success. And that's where one of these enters the picture, a double boiler. A double boiler is all about easing off the heat and allowing you to cook delicate, delicious recipes. Today I'm going to explain what a double boiler is, show you how to use one, and then I'm going to demonstrate two classic recipes using a double boiler. So let's get double boiling. Hello and welcome to I Want to Cook. My name is Chef Matt and this channel is all about helping you be a better cook. And today we are turning our attention to the double boiler. And first off, no, a double boiler will not boil water at 424 degrees. Hey, see what I did there? Math. A double boiler just consists of two pots that can nestle together or simply a pot and a bowl that can fit over the top. Now, my double boiler happens to be a pretty rare one. That's because it is a vintage Visions double boiler. Visions was uh, made by the Corning Company. And well, as you can see, it's see-through. And that was kind of the whole idea with Visions cookware. It's made of this specialized glass that's flame-proof and well, you can see right through it. And that's going to be great for this demo because you're going to see exactly what is happening. So to cook with a double boiler, what you do is you fill the bottom pot with a little bit of water, maybe just like an inch or so. You bring that to a simmer and then you put the upper pot on top of that bottom pot. That's the double boiler portion. So instead of having a pot directly over flame and kind of having that intensity that you might get with standard cooking, what you're actually doing is you're heating that upper pot by the steam that is created from the water vapor coming off that lower pot. This heats foods enough to cook them, but it can eliminate the risk of scorching or curdling delicate foods and sauces. Okay, so what do you cook in a double boiler? Well, as you might guess, uh, not things that require really high heat or searing. You're not gonna be cooking a steak in one of these or searing a chicken, that's not its purpose. Again, this is all about gentleness. And two things these pots are really, really good at is melting chocolate and making a very delicate sauce like hollandaise. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to cook both of those things in one of these pots. Okay, so I have my double boiler going here and you notice that I just have the water simmering. You don't want to boil with this. You just want to keep it a nice simmer that's going to be nice and gentle. I've got my upper pot in here and we are going to start with chocolate because, well, you should always start with chocolate, right? So here's how we're going to melt this chocolate. We're just going to pour these pieces right in here and this only takes maybe a couple minutes or so. It happens really quick. But what we're gonna do is we are just going to gently melt these wafers of chocolate. And you can see they're already starting to melt. Now, chocolate is one of those tricky things because you know, if you try to do it directly over the stove, it can scorch, it can burn, it can be kind of nasty. But with a double boiler, see, it's just gonna melt all these pieces nice and gentle. So we're just gonna melt these down and then I'm gonna show you what I do with that wonderful melted chocolate. And next thing you know, we have melted chocolate. This only took about a couple of minutes. And as you can see, we have this lovely, velvety, wonderful sauce. So I'm gonna kill the heat here and there's gonna be enough heat remaining in this pot to keep it nice and warm. And now we are going to get to coating some delicious things.
So when you have a double boiler, you get to make things like this. We've got a whole bunch of chocolate covered strawberries and chocolate covered marshmallows here. All you do is you let that chocolate re-solidify. It makes a nice chocolate crust and well, there you go. Thank you, double boiler. Oh, look who just arrived. She has an absolute radar for chocolate. This is my lovely wife, Christine, definitely my better half. Um, <laughs> would you like to try one of our yes. chocolate covered confections here? Yes, I would. <laughs> How do we do? Oh, I'm gonna drop. That's so good. Okay, that is that is thanks to a double boiler. So uh, there you go. There's another reason to have a double boiler. We're gonna need more of these. <laughs> Okay, it is hollandaise time, and with this recipe, I'm gonna demonstrate that you don't necessarily need a double boiler. All you need is a pot and, well, a big mixing bowl. In this case, this is one of those big, cheap stainless steel bowls. So to make hollandaise sauce, you need some egg yolks. I've cracked three egg yolks, a little bit of water. You initially stir and whisk until this becomes nice and frothy. Then we're gonna put it over the heat, and I'm gonna show you how to make hollandaise on a double boiler. Okay, so here we go. We are gonna put this bowl over our pot of steaming water and we are just going to whisk. Now, to make a hollandaise, you need some egg yolks, you need some butter, a little bit of lemon juice, and just a little bit of seasoning. But hollandaise is a very rich, delicate sauce and the reason you wanna use a double boiler is because, well, these are eggs and if they're exposed to high heat, they can curdle. You don't want scrambled eggs with this. You want a nice velvety sauce. So this is a perfect application for a double boiler. So all you do is you whisk and whisk and whisk for about two or three minutes until this gets nice and thick. And if it gets too hot, if you feel that pan getting a little warm and you maybe start to see some curdles, just lift it right off the pot. We're gonna whisk until this thickens up a bit. Okay, our yolks are getting frothy, and now it is butter time. We use a bit of butter in this, almost a stick, and I've made some clarified butter. That's butter that has all those milk solids removed. In fact, I made a video on it, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. But now that we have these frothy, we are just gonna start to drizzle in our butter in a nice slow stream. You wanna let it get incorporated before you drizzle more, just like this until all that melted butter is nice and incorporated into this sauce. Okay, now we are gonna finish this with just a little bit of lemon juice to give it some acidity, a little bit of salt, and then our old friend, white pepper. Just a dash of this. You can use black pepper too, but if you do that, then some of those black specks will be all in that sauce. And here we go we have a beautiful hollandaise that is ready to be poured over steamed vegetables or eggs benedict or whatever you want. Thanks, double boiler. So there you go, there is a little double boiler 101. I can't wait to hear what you whip up in one of these. Be sure to share that in the comments below. Okay, trivia time. And speaking of interesting cookware, last week I asked you to identify this type of pan, and several of you knew it, this is indeed a Windsor pan. And I do plan to make an entire video on this, but it's a very special pan. And as you can see, it's got this fluided top here. So the, the top is actually wider than the bottom. And what this is for is to facilitate evaporation and reductions when making a sauce. So if you wanted to uh, have a sauce that reduces quicker, you would use a pan like this. This is called a Windsor pan. For this week's trivia, we are going to the produce aisle 
who is going to be the first to identify what this thing is? What could this possibly be? This odd looking little green thing. If you know or have a guess, put it in the comments below and I will let you know the correct answer next week. Hey, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Until next time, I hope you want to cook.